Hey, what is up everyone? I'm again here and welcome back to a brand new Godot tutorial here on the channel. So this is part 10 of my Godot tutorial series where I teach you guys how to make a basic horror game in Godot. So yeah, this is part 10 and in this part I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually make your enemy AIs open up doors. So if you remember a few parts ago I showed you all how to make an AI. Um, let's go back to that scene, here it is. So this here is our like monster. And I do understand that it's just a capsule, but in a future tutorial, I do actually plan to show you guys how I do make models in Blender. I wouldn't call myself a professional at modeling at all, or even great at modeling, but you know, enough to know the basics and make models the way I do. So yeah, we're going to be replacing this capsule in a future tutorial, do not worry. And uh, yeah, so... I might even do it um, out of this tutorial series, like in its own, like, uh, you know, individual tutorial out of this series, maybe. Who knows, we'll see uh, how I do that tutorial. But anyways, what we're going to be doing now is I'm going to be showing you guys how to actually make the enemies open up doors. Because a few tutorials ago, I showed you guys how to make an enemy AI, and something which bothered me a bit was how it walked through the doors. And obviously we need to add in the functionality to make sure that our AI doesn't do that so then it does open up the doors if they are closed. So if you guys do enjoy this tutorial or you do learn something from it or both, be sure to like, comment and subscribe for more. And let's get right into it. And another thing which I want to say as well is my game ULAM Shadow Memories, my most recent horror game, ULAM Shadow Memories, that I made in collaboration with my friend Aaron Wise, has just released on Steam and Itch.io recently. So if you'd like to go check it out, be sure to. And so yeah, now without further ado, let's get right into this. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our monster, and we're going to right click on its parent node here, we're going to go add child node, raycast 3D, so make sure that you type up here in the search bar raycast, and then you select the raycast 3D. So now what we're going to do is we're going to then go transform, and I'm going to then rotate it on its x axis by 90 degrees, and so then it's facing forward. Uh, we'll have it positioned like that. And I do think that is a decent length, so I don't think that I'll need to change my raycast length. But of course, set your raycast length to whatever you need to. <clears throat> and so anyways, now what we're going to do is we're going to then save that. Make sure you do save often in case your engine crashes or your PC crashes or something like that. And then we're going to go where it says script empty, go new script. And I'm going to call this enemy raycast. You guys can call it what you like, and I'm going to save it into my scripts folder go create and now what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go into the Raycast folder I made for my player in a um, in a separate tutorial so if you haven't watched my earlier tutorials I do suggest that you do in case this is all confusing to you but uh, in a in a previous tutorial in this series I actually showed how to you know interact with objects uh, using Raycast attached to the player's camera and so basically, um, yeah, this is my player's Raycast script, and what we're going to be doing is we're just going to be Control A, Control C to copy it, and then we're going to go to my enemy Raycast script here, and then paste it in. So there are some changes we're going to need to make. It's not just as simple as, oh, you know, now we can just use this. We do, we do need to make some changes. So first up, we're going to be removing the variable uh, in text, which is for the interaction text, and this basically uh, lets our player know that we can interact with things, but we don't want the interaction text appearing whenever the AI is trying to interact with the door, so yeah. So what we're going to do is we're going to remove all this, and then uh, yeah, just anything to do with the in text here, and there we go. And then we of course need to remove the thing here to do with the uh, interact button being pressed. And boom, so that should be it for now. There is one other change that we need to make and that's to the method that we're checking here. So basically, um, for those who need a refresher, how this Raycast script will be working is if the Raycast script is colliding with a static body 3D or, you know, just a rigid body 3D, or, or a physics body 3D, I think that's what it's called in Godot, something like that. But um, anyways, um, when it's co colliding with something, right, that it, that can be interacted with, like a static body 3D, for example, uh, basically the hit variable will be made, and it will get the collider of that node, or that object, that it's hitting. And if that hit variable has the method interact, then it will um, do that method, basically, so yeah. So the hit variable, for those who just need me to say it again, will equal to the collider of the object or node, whatever you want to call it, 
that the uh, Raycast is hitting. So if the Raycast is hitting the monster, for example, then the Raycast will detect that. But because the monster doesn't have the method uh, interact in its script, that basically um, won't do anything here. So yeah, that's just an example. But we will need to change up this method. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to our door here, to our door script. And as you can see here, we actually have our interact function, but we're going to need to make a special function specifically for our enemy AI. So what we're going to do is we're going to do func, and I'm going to call this, uh, we'll call this enemy interact. Oh, so here we have func enemy interact. And so what I'm going to be doing here is I'm basically going to be um, checking if opened equals to false. So that means if the door is closed, then opened will equal to true. And um, we can just uh, copy this stuff here. So basically what I'm copying here is just the, uh, so the open sound will play for the door and then the open animation will play for the door. And um, is there anything else here? Oh yeah, we can also make the, in the door not interactable for that moment whilst it's opening, of course, because, you know, the enemy will be opening it. So we want to make sure that the, uh, the player can't interact with that whilst that's happening. Then we can just get this bit of code here. And uh, boom. And also another thing we'll need to check as well is if the door is um, locked. So if locked equals... Oh wait, sorry, I need to do if get underscore parent uh, uh, sorry I'm accidentally pressing the wrong keys and stuff underscore parent dot locked equal to false so yeah now let me explain what's going on here so basically what we've done here is we have created a new function and this is called enemy interact so basically when the enemy um, makes contact with the door, so when the raycast of the enemy um, hits the door and it detects the door, what will happen is it will check if the door is closed, so if opened equals to false, and if the door is locked. So for those of you wondering, oh, why do we need to get two parent objects before we check the locked variable? Well, it's because the, so if we go to our door script here, as you can see, our door script is attached to the static body 3D, right? But then um, we've got the hinge node, and then we've got the door above that, and then the door, as you can see, this has its own script attached, and this is the door parent script, which has the locked variable. So yeah, so the door script here is on the static body 3D in the hierarchy, and then the door parent is two nodes above. So yeah, that's why we're checking two nodes above for the locked variable. And then so if those conditions are met, opened will equal to true, then the open sound for the door will play, interactable will equal to false and the player can't interact with the door whilst it's opening for the enemy then the open animation will play and then we will wait one second before the door is then interactable again because it takes a door for it takes one second for the door to open so uh yeah so that's how that works okay so the next step after doing this is we're going to go to our enemy raycast script and where it says if hit dot has method interact, we're then going to add enemy out the front of this with an underscore because of course that is what the uh, uh, function is called here. And it'll be called, um, yeah, enemy interact here. So we're going to be checking if the hit variable, so the collider that the raycast is hitting, we're going to be checking if it has, if the script of it attached to that uh, collider has the method interact. And so yeah, and then if it does, then the in the enemy interact uh, method will happen. So yeah, that is going to be our enemy raycast script for uh, opening the doors. So now what we're going to do, of course, is we are going to test this out and see if it all does work. So fingers crossed that it all does go perfectly. Wait a second, let me just check something here, guys. Oh, I think I know why now. Okay guys, so um, I just tested it before. I don't know if I'll include the footage of me testing it um, in, this, uh, in this video. I did record it, of course, but I don't know if I'll include it just in case it takes up a bit too much time that uh, you know I could cut off of this video. But um, anyways, so I was just testing the thing before and I was thinking to myself, huh, why did the AI just walk through the door again? 
And then I remembered that um the collision layer in a in a previous tutorial we set it to two. So um what we need to do here is with our uh, enemy's ray cast, we need to set the collision mask to two as well. So yeah. So I actually forgot all about that. So now it should actually work. So before you do test it out, guys, make sure you do do that. So uh yeah. Anyways, now it should be okay to test. Alright, now let's go check if this works. So before he comes, let's quickly close the door. And hey, he opens it! Yay, it worked. So as you guys just saw there, he opened the door. Oh wait, I didn't have time to close it then. Ah, uh, I don't have time to close it to test it out, damn it. I should have probably made him slower before testing it. Oh, and then he just opened it again. If you guys want to like extend out your enemy's rate cast as well, if you feel like um, the enemy is a bit too like, you know, fast with uh, moving as the doors open, because if you just saw just then, right, um, as the enemy was opening the door, he was also walking through it as well because he was a bit fast. So what you might want to do is you might want to extend your ray cast's length out a bit, so then the door opens a bit earlier before the enemy then reaches it, so then it doesn't look like they're going to walk through it as the door's opening. So yeah. So that's what I'm going to do there. Another thing I want to do as well is I want to slow down the enemy just to make sure I can properly test out the doors better so then the enemy isn't like, you know, moving at almost the player's same speed. So let's go do that quickly because I want to test it out just one more time. Oh. Um, wait, where do I set the monster speed again? Oh yeah, that's right, I did it in the script. Because I thought I made it like a public variable or something, but anyways, I'm going to change this to two and a half. I think that's a better speed. And now, let's test it again. Alrighty, now let's test this out. So now that the AI is moving at a slower speed, we can actually test out these doors better now. I'm just hoping that the AI comes before the f Oh, there we go, yep, he came. And he was able to open that door as well, just as I closed it. Yep, so as you can see, it all works perfectly fine. He's able to open and close the doors. Also, I'm going to be honest, that flat, that light with how much it's flashing is annoying me so much. But yeah, anyways, um, yeah. I don't not know why that light likes to flash so much. Did I set it so then it flashes a lot? Hold on. Oh yeah, I did. You know what, let's actually turn up the max time on that. To maybe something like a hundred, so then I never have to hear it again. And then we'll set the minimum time to like 40. There we go. Alright, just wanted to change that up a bit. But anyway, so as you just saw there, the enemy is now o able to open up the doors. And um, also, something else here that I should probably do is I need to fix up the nav mesh. I just noticed that the nav mesh here is a bit mi mixed up. There we go. Um, I might want to test out the uh, enemy uh, door opening again, because I know it does work, but um, I want to test it again with now the nav mesh here being fixed up, because I didn't realise um, I didn't have the nav mesh here baked properly. So uh, yeah. But anyways, um, so as you just saw, that all worked perfectly fine. And um, yeah, you can use that script for anything, by the way. You don't have to use it just for enemy AIs. You can also just use it for normal NPCs. Like if you have just normal, regular uh, NPCs walking around your map, which by the way, um, something else which um, I want to do is I want to show you guys how to actually make like a patrolling enemy AI. You know, like an enemy which patrols around and actually looks around and goes to different random positions before, um, you know, uh, chasing the player. So I will be showing you guys how to do that in a future tutorial as well, so do be sure to keep a lookout for that, hopefully it's not too long away. But uh, yeah, so the next thing that I'm going to be showing you guys today is um, how I do like paintings in my horror games, since if you've played some of my horror games before, I do usually like to have like some paintings and stuff like that, like with ULEM Shadow Memories for example. So I will be showing you guys how to do that, and we're going to be placing around some paintings and stuff, so that's what I'm going to be doing next. Alrighty, so here I am in MS Paint, and the reason as to why I'm in MS Paint is because we're just going to be doing, like, just, like, some, like, 
uh, you know, just regular painting style paintings, you know, nothing too realistic or anything like that, you know, so yeah, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna do like a black background, and I'm just gonna do something random for this, so you guys can do whatever you like, of course, and you don't have to do paintings as well, the reason as to why I'm doing this is just because with this tutorial series, um, I'm just trying to, you know, show a bunch of different stuff, whether it be, you know, related to making scenery for your horror games, or, you know, making AIs, making sounds, you know, that sort of stuff. Yeah, um, I just want to, like, teach as much as I possibly can in this series, you know, so yeah. Basically, I'm just showing whatever I can, whether it be related to mechanics, you know, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, this might be a long tutorial series, because there's a bunch of stuff that I want to show in it. Anyways, so this is looking alright right now, so I don't know what exactly I'm going for here, I guess you got like this red landscape and then like, I don't know, like sort of like cloudy clouds, might have a few lightning strikes or whatever, you know, just some random stuff. That's usually what I do for these paintings is, you know, I'll just like think of something, you know, very quickly in my head and just be like, you know, I'll just do that. Or I just, you know, improvise like I'm doing right now, I won't even think of something. But yeah. This looks a bit silly, but, you know, who cares, it's just a tutorial. You guys can do whatever you like for your paintings. And then, uh... I'm gonna do like a... wait, no. I'm gonna do like an Omo logo up here as well, just cause why not. And then I'm gonna finish off the painting there. Alrighty, so there we go, there is our little Omo logo there. Now I'm going to save this. Something else which I just realized as well is I've got two other um, textures here for painting free and then Linus painting scary. So for those of you who don't know, these are files from uh, Lee, You Are Liam Shadow Memories, my horror game which I just released recently. And I think the reason as to why I included them here is because I wanted to show you guys in a future tutorial how to actually make it so that if you stare at a painting for long enough then something scary happens. So that is something that I will be doing. I don't know if I'll do it in this tutorial, but in a future tutorial, in a, uh, in a future tutorial I may, so do keep that in mind. So anyways, what we're going to do now is we're actually going to create a new 3D scene and this is going to be for our painting. I'm going to call this painting. <coughs> And, um, I don't know if I'll make it a static body 3D. Actually, yeah, no, we'll, we'll change the type of this to a static body 3D as well. Just so then we give it some collision. And then I'm going to add a new collision shape 3D. I mean, yeah, no, we'll add a new collision shape 3D. But we'll need to change it up later on, because we won't be able to leave it as just a cube for now. But yeah, we'll just leave it like for that now. And then we'll go mesh instance 3D. And then um, with this we'll go a box mesh, and this will be like the frame of our painting. So there we go, there is like the frame of our painting there. And now what we're going to do is, um, I'm going to turn on the lighting first, now what we're going to do is we're then going to duplicate that. And I'm going to turn off the mesh here and I'm going to reset this to a quad mesh so it's just flat. Now there will be a bit of adjustments that we'll need to do here, so let's rotate this on its y-axis, I think like that. Make this a bit smaller. And then stretch it out more. So this will be like where our actual painting is. So we have like the frame, and then we have the actual painting itself. <clears throat> so if you want to have multiple paintings um, in your scene, right? Uh, instead of doing multiple different like scenes for each painting, right? Uh, what we're going to do is we're actually going to make a script which um, is attached to the uh, parent object of our painting. So then when we include the paintings in our scene, uh, we can actually like assign a certain public variable which will be like a material, right? To that painting in particular. And then when the scene starts, that material that you've assigned to that particular painting will then be assigned to the uh, painting here on a on your uh, on your painting. So yeah. So what I'm gonna do here is with the painting frame, um, you can just add a, a material to it. So I'm just gonna add um, the floor material here. And um, oh, I just realised that just changed um, this as well because I had them both selected. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to create the painting material. 
So, oh wait, I don't want to duplicate that. I'm, I'm going to create a new material. So if you don't know how to create a new material again, you need a refresher, you go create new resource. And then we're going to search up material, go standard material 3D. And I'm going to call this painting. And boom, save. Alrighty, so now that I've got my uh, painting material made here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the, um, where is it? The albedo, and then we're going to change the texture. And I'm going to change this to my painting uh, texture here. And what I'm going to do also is I'm going to see how this looks by dra oh, oh my god. Why did it just add it to both? Why? Like, come on. There we go. Boom. Okay, so I understand now. So it didn't actually add it to both before. I didn't realize it was um, behind this still. So it was actually um, still white. So yeah. But anyways, um, let's just see how this painting looks here by... There we go. So yeah, I think that looks pretty good. So anyways, um, there is our painting. And uh, soon what I want to do as well is I want to show you guys how to actually add normal maps to your materials so they actually do stand out more and do actually look a lot better because trust me, normal maps do really make stuff stand out a lot. So I do want to show you guys how to actually uh, do that at some point. So yeah, it might be in this tutorial or the next, we'll see. But anyways, now that we know how this painting looks, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, drag just another random material onto this. Um, we'll just put that there for now. And the reason as to why is because um, we're actually going to be doing the script to assign the particular painting material. And I do want to show you guys and prove to you guys that, of course, it does work. You know what I mean? So, yeah. So now that we have our basic painting here all made up and we've got the uh, material all made up, if you want to make more painting materials, that's totally fine. I totally understand. But um, yeah, what we're going to be doing is we're going to select our painting uh, parent node here. Script empty, go new script. And I'm just going to leave this as painting. And we're going to put this in the scripts folder. Go create. And then with our ready function here, we're going to leave that. Just going to get rid of the comment though. And then I'm going to create a new variable. It will be a public variable. So we're going to go at export var. Var means variable. And then I'm going to call this material. Or we could even just call it like painting mat. And the type of this will be a standard material 3D. And then what we're going to do is we're then going to... Oh, we're then going to get the name of our uh, actual like painting node. So for me, it is Mesh Instance 3D2. And then what we're going to do is, um, if you see here on the Geometry tab, we have the um, the variable Material Override. So we want to go dot Material underscore Override equals, and then Painting underscore Mat, and then boom, that should be it. And so there we go, that is our painting script all done. So now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to adjust the collision for our painting. And as I said as well, in a future tutorial, I'll show you guys how to make it so then, um, you know, if you want it in your game, so then the player stares at a painting and something scary happens. I'll show you guys how to do that in a future tutorial as well. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go to our level node, or our level scene, I should say. Um, just hide some of this stuff here so then it's not all clogging up. There we go, that looks a lot better now. There we go. So now I'm going to drag in the painting. And here we are, there is our painting. Now let's set it all up. So I'm going to rotate this, there we go. And boom. Now I'm going to put a few of these around and I am going to actually make a few more like painting materials as well just to show a few more examples of um, uh, you know, how the paintings work and stuff. But uh, yeah, so as you can see here, with our um, painting selected, you can see the painting mat variable, and that's what we need to assign in order to uh, make our paintings have a particular look. I'm not gonna add too many of these around, just a few as like an example, but yeah. Usually in some of my horror games, I do like to add some paintings. That's why I'm showing you guys uh, basically this little, uh, you know, part of the tutorial on how to do them. Or on how I do them at least. But yeah, so we have like four paintings around now. And uh, what I'm going to do with these is I'm going to basically first off actually create a new painting material. I'm just going to duplicate this. Call it painting 2. 
And all I'm going to do for this is I'm basically going to change it to the Liam painting that I already have. So that's called Painting Free. Change to that. There we go. And now we're going to um, basically assign both the Liam painting and the painting that I just showed you guys how to make before. I'm going to be now assigning them to the four paintings in our scene. So we're going to click on this one. Painting mat. I'm going to go quick load and I'm going to search up painting. And this one will have the first painting material. This one here will have the Liam painting material. So we're going to go painting two for this one. Oh, and then right here, we're going to then do the normal painting. And then for the fourth one, wherever I put that, there it is. We're then going to put the painting material of Liam again. And there we go. Alrighty, so let's test out the paintings now. Oh, I'm having a bit of issues here. Oh, God damn it. Don't tell me I'm having this happen now. So for those of you who don't know, sometimes Godot um, can have this issue where, um, you know, it can stutter every few seconds or so. But um, anyways, let's just ignore the stuttering. So as you can see here, and by the way, this doesn't happen in built games as well, this stuttering. This is literally an in-engine thing. So yeah, this doesn't happen in, in like actual built games. This is just an in-engine bug. But um, yeah, so basically as you can see here, our paintings have been assigned. So we have our Omo Storm painting right there. And then we have our Liam painting which has been assigned. And then the other two paintings out here will have been assigned as well. So yeah, it all worked perfectly fine. Now let's go quick game. But yeah, so if you've ever experienced that uh, in Engine before when testing out your games, um, yeah, don't worry, that can that can happen sometimes. It might depend on how powerful your PC is. Maybe it's just something that happens to less powerful PCs like mine. But yeah, just a warning for anyone. But yeah. So I just recorded the ending to the tutorial before, but um, I might actually just um, edit that in towards, um, you know, being after this part that I'm recording right now. Because um, there is actually one last thing that I do want to show you guys before ending this tutorial, and that is actually how to make it so then your paintings, if you stare at them for long enough, actually scare you. Now, this won't apply to all your paintings, you know, this could just be like one painting you want to do this, or something like that, you know, like an easter egg, or something like that. Or, you know, maybe a way for the player to progress through the game, I could also show that in a future tutorial on how to actually, you know, make it so then after you stare at a painting and then something scary happens and, you know, something appears or something like that. Or maybe you guys could code that in yourselves without me having to show you in a tutorial if you've basically already learnt enough from the coding that I've showed in this series, but yeah. So anyways, um, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be going into our, uh, we'll go to our painting scene just so then we're more in the mood for the painting here. So then we're going to go to our, um, uh, yeah, we'll go to our painting script here. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new function, and this function will be called scare. Now, I'm just going to leave pass here for now, and then we're actually going to create another function, and this will be called stop scare. So this will be for if the player looks away from the painting before the scare can happen. So now what we're going to do here is in the scare function, so if the player is actually like staring at the painting, we're going to go await, then get underscore, um, wait no, yeah, get underscore tree, then dot create underscore timer. And then what we're going to do here is we're actually going to do like a wait time for uh, how many seconds. So we're going to add in a few new variables. We're going to go at export var, scary painting. And this will be a standard material 3D. And then we're going to create another public variable, and this will be called, um, or stare time we'll call this. I was going to call it wait time, but we'll call it stare time. And this will be a float. So then here, in the timer, we're going to put the stare time. And we're going to do false here, so then, the, it, so then this timer only happens when the game uh, isn't paused. And yeah, so there we go. And then after the scare time happens, what will happen is, um the scary painting will then be assigned to the mesh so we're going to go mesh instance 3d2 since that's what my painting mesh is called you can just put your name in here and you have to put the dollar sign out the front of it as well 
I'm gonna go dot material override equals scary painting. Oh, scary painting, and there we go. And then afterwards, what will happen is we'll then add another timer, and we're gonna create another variable. So we're gonna copy the stair time variable here. And we'll call this the scare time. So we have the stair time and the scare time. And in this timer here, but beneath this, we're then going to replace stair time with scare time. And then it will just equal to the normal painting again afterwards. So uh, yeah. So that there is how the scare will happen. And also another thing as well, which we'll need to do. We'll need to actually add a sound. So we'll go add child node, audio stream player 3D. And this will be like our scare sound for when the scary painting appears. So if you want a scare sound to happen, then yeah, we'll be adding a scare sound. So I'm gonna assign, um, do I have any scary sounds here? I, sh I do have a few, I think. We'll go with this one, we'll just go with jump. I think this is the only scary sound I have at the moment in this uh, project file. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna set the max distance to something like 15. Um, yeah, I think that's good enough. And uh, yeah, so I think all this is good enough. There's no other settings that I really want to change here. So yeah. And I will rename this to like jump scare as well, the sound. And now we're going to go back into the painting script here. And when the scary painting appears, so we're going to have um, jump scare dot play. And then we're going to copy this. And then down here, when the painting goes back to normal, we're then going to stop the jump scare sound if it's, uh, you know, longer than it, than you would think it is. So yeah. So now with the stop scare, uh, basically what this will do is this is basically going to like stop the scare function. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a variable and we're going to call this looking and I'm going to make this equal to false for now. So looking equals false. And what we're going to do here is for the scare function, so when uh, the player is looking at the actual thing, right, uh, looking will equal to true. So what we're going to do is we're going to go if looking equal to false, then we'll tab this underneath that. Above here we're going to go looking equal to true. So now the player, so now when the player looks at the uh, the painting, looking will equal to true. But when the player looks away from it, looking will equal to false. So now you might be wondering, well, when the player looks at the painting, the function's going to happen. So then how are we actually going to stop that function? Like, wouldn't have already happened anyway, even if the player looks away from it? Well, yeah, that's why, um, that's where the looking function, I mean, the looking variable, uh, looking bool, I should be more exact with that. Um, that's where that comes in. So that's where that comes in again. So we're going to go then again here. So after the stair time, right, if the player is still looking at the painting, so if looking still equals to true, that's when all this stuff, other stuff will happen here. Otherwise it won't happen. So yeah, that's how that will work. And so now what we're going to do is we're actually going to go to our, um, actually, should we make this equal? No, that should still say scare. I was going to say, should we make that interact? But no, I think that should still stay scare. So yeah, so anyways, now here we have our player Raycast script. So we will be needing to add in a few new things into this. So what we're going to do here is we're actually going to copy this part here that says if hit dot has method interact. And we're going to then place that right here. And we're going to replace interact with scare. So if hit dot has method scare, what will happen is hit dot scare. Alrighty, so now what we need to do is we actually need to make a new variable, and this will be called a uh, last hit. So this will actually be a variable that will equal to um, uh, whatever has been last uh, hit in the in the scene. So let's say, for example, the raycast has hit a door, but then the raycast is no longer hitting that door. This last hit variable will equal to that door still, even after the uh, 
even after the variable is no longer, um, I mean, even after the raycast is no longer hitting that door, the variable will still equal to that door. So that's what this is going to be for. So what we're going to do here is, um, we're going to do last hit equals to hit. So whatever hit equals to is what last hit will equal to. So then down here, what we're going to do, so if the raycast isn't colliding with anything, so else, um, if uh, last hit not equal to null, so if it is actually equal to something, and last underscore hit dot has method scare, what we're going to do is, um, so I'm going to check my painting script here again. So as you can see here, the function for stopping the scare is called stop underscore scare. So what we're going to do is we're going to then go last hit dot stop underscore scare. And hopefully that will work as intended. So that should all, so that should be all we have to do there. I don't think there's anything else that we need to do there. I think that should all work perfectly fine. And uh, yeah, so now let's go test it out. Oh, and by the way, I should probably mention this as well. This is actually my first time um, doing uh, painting scares in Godot. I've done it in Unity many times before since this is Miranda. But um, yeah, when it comes to uh, Godot, this is actually my first time doing it. So yeah, I'm just using methods of coding, which I already know of. Because, you know, from all the coding I've done in Godot, you know, I know how to make things go visible. I know how to change materials in code know how to do timers and that sort of stuff and I'm able to apply that knowledge to then new, do new stuff which I haven't done before so yeah you know like you know that you're getting good at coding when you're able to do stuff that you haven't done before like you don't you know you don't have to look up tutorials for it because you already know a bunch of coding methods you know which can already get you to already being able to create that function on your own so yeah so anyways um now let's go test out the uh, the painting and hopefully everything works as intended. So let's go test it out. I've got my fingers crossed. All right, now for the moment of truth, let's go test this out now. Oh, wait a second. I forgot. All right, so before we test this out, there is one thing which I just forgot to do, and that is to assign the uh, certain variables that we need to to these paintings. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all four paintings and I'm going to give them the exact same scary painting material. I think it's called um, Liam something or Linus something. What is it called again? Oh, I accidentally just spelled that wrong. No, seriously, what is it called again? Oh, I don't even think I have a material for it yet. Yeah. All right, hold on. I need to make a material for this scary painting and then we'll uh, get right back to it. So let's just do that quickly. Linus painting scare. Should be all good. Alrighty, so now what we can do is we can select these paintings again. Scary painting, Linus, oh, wait, no, it's called painting free. There we go. And then with the stair time, I'm going to set them all to like four seconds. And then I'll have a scare time of one second. And now that should all work. So now let's test it out again. Alrighty, so here we are. Now what we're going to do is we're now going to stare at this painting. And as you can see, the scare happened. If you only want it to happen once, I will include a bit into the, into the script for that as well. But yeah, so when you look at the when you look at the face uh, once, yeah, that will happen. Let's do it here. And boom, that worked. So now what I want to test is um, when I look at it and then look away. So I'm going to look at it and then look away. Now let's hope that that stops. Ah, oh, it's it still happened unfortunately. I think that actually stopped that time. Yeah, it stopped that time too. So there is a few changes to the script that I think I need to make because I am thinking in my head right now there is a few changes that I need to make to this script. Yeah, there's definitely a few changes to this script that I need to make. Alright, so let's go do that. Alrighty, so let's go back to our Raycast script. 
So with the last hit equals hit variable, right? What we're going to do is we're actually going to make it so this only equals to the hit variable if the method that it is hitting equals to scare. So yeah, that's the only time last hit will equal to hit. And this will basically, um, hopefully, fix up that issue we're having before, where um, when we're looking at the painting and then we look away, the scare then still happens. And the reason as to why I think that happens is because when we look away from the painting, if we look at anything else afterwards, last hit will no longer equal to that painting. So yeah, hopefully this will fix up that issue. And uh, yeah. Oh yeah, and the other thing is too, um, if you only want your painting thing to occur once, um, you know, we can of course do that if you want to, so we can actually do a, a new variable, we can do a new bool, we'll call this export var only underscore once, and this will be a bool. There we go. So basically, if only once um, equals to true, that will mean that this will only happen once, so if you look at the painting, uh, once and then the scare happens, it will only happen once. So we're going to actually add in a new variable called done. So with the scare function, if looking equals to false and if done equals to false, uh, you know, then everything here will happen. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be adding in this section if only underscore once equals to true, then done will equal to true. So then uh, this will only happen once. So yeah. So now what we're going to do is we're actually going to, um, I'm going to test out the only once on just one of these paintings here. And now let's go test out our paintings again, hopefully everything works alright. Also before we do test, one thing that we need to do as well is make sure that we do done equals to false. So then, uh, you know, it actually does equal to false before testing. So yeah, and now let's actually test it out. Alrighty, so now let's look at the painting. Boom, the scare happened. So now let's um, look at the painting again, and then we'll look away. And as you can see, the scare didn't happen. Now let's actually test it out with this. So I just looked at another object just then to make sure that we're testing it out all correctly. And yeah, I mean, right now it looks all good. I mean, I've been looking at the painting a couple times, and the scare isn't happening. You know, so... Yeah. I think it all works perfectly now. There we go. Alright, so yeah, I think the painting scares all work really well now. Oh. Let's actually test out this uh, painting here. This one is set to only happen once. Alrighty, so now if we actually look at that painting again, it shouldn't have its jump scare happen again. And yeah, as you can see, this painting doesn't do the jump scare again, because it only happened once. And so yeah, so that there guys is going to be the end of this tutorial. If you did enjoy, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more. In part 11 I do have a few things planned, such as uh, hopefully I'll be showing you guys how to add normal maps. To your materials. Uh, normal maps really do make your uh, materials pop out and I'll also be showing you how to add like roughness maps and all that sort of stuff as well. So if you do want to learn how to do that be sure to stay tuned for part 11 of this series. And yeah so overall uh, with this tutorial series there's just so much that I do want to show of it and that's why there will probably be a lot of parts with it because there's like a lot of stuff that I do want to show off you know show you guys how to do. So yeah anyways I'll see you all soon in my next one. Bye bye.